Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Wright B Flyer Replica executes emergency landing. Special air traffic procedures for NBAA base. California politics put Starlink in timeout. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Wright B Flyer Replica executes emergency landing. A Wright B Flyer Replica aircraft was forced to execute an emergency landing after experiencing an engine fire in flight. The pilots fortunately were able to walk away unharmed. The aircraft took off from Wright-Patterson AFB at around 4.47 p.m. It was performing an aerial flyover as part of Wright Field's 97th anniversary celebration. Then, at approximately 5.07 p.m., it experienced a malfunction that led to the engine catching fire. The Wright B. Flyer Museum in Dayton is investigating the forced emergency landing. Currently, the museum is working to both preserve the aircraft and examine it in hopes of pinpointing blame for the malfunction. The base said in a statement, quote, a Wright B Flyer replica performing an aerial flyover had a malfunction that caused the engine to catch fire, resulting in an emergency landing." End quote. The Wright B Flyer Museum, which owns the aircraft, has yet to provide details on the pilots themselves. The aircraft involved is believed to be November 1217 Bravo, nicknamed White Bird. The museum's original Wright B replica was the Brown Bird. This took flight in 1982 and was used for performances and displays. After the break, Tuskegee University honors history with new aviation program. For over 30 years, the massive sport plane resource guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital sport plane resource guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. There's a lot of places I get to at the end of the runway or in turnarounds that I need an engine running. So to me, it's very important to have a product that I'm absolutely confident with. I am very confident with the Trailblazer propeller. And when I'm flying air shows, I know that propeller's gonna be right for me. The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The Surewings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit Sherwings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Tuskegee University honors history with a new aviation program. Tuskegee University recently received accreditation and opened applications for its new aviation degree program. This will make it the first historically black college or university in Alabama to offer an aviation pathway. The program is in addition to Tuskegee University's existing Aerospace Avenue. It launched its EAC ABET accredited aerospace science engineering program in 1983 and currently provides a Bachelor of Science degree. The university received $6.7 million in federal funding for the new flight program earlier this year. B-29 Dock returning to Tulsa Air and Space Museum and Planetarium. The B-29 Superfortress Dock History Restored Tour will return to Tulsa International Airport in Oklahoma October 18th through 20th for a weekend stop at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. The B-29 Dock will arrive on Friday, October 18th and will be available for ground and cockpit tours as well as flight experience rides throughout the weekend. While it's on the ground, visitors can climb up inside the aircraft through the forward bomb bay door to look around and tour the historic aircraft. Boeing laying off 17,000 in the coming months. Boeing continues to bleed money due to the strike hurting production of aircraft. 
As a result, the manufacturer plans to lay off about 10 percent of its workforce in the coming months. Of the company's 170,000 employees worldwide, the job cuts will amount to about 17,000 and will be across the board to include executives, managers, and employees, according to a memo the company's new CEO, Kelly Ortberg, sent to staff on October 11th. Temporary rolling furloughs will be suspended when the layoffs begin. Radio Tower Collapses After Balloon Strike a KKOB radio tower went down on October 11th after being hit by a hot air balloon. The incident occurred near Balloon Fiesta Park in Albuquerque, New Mexico, shortly after the launch of the annual Balloon Fiesta and Special Shapes Rodeo. According to Bernalillo County Fire Rescue, the hot air balloon struck one of the towers around 8.45 a.m. Deputies and FAA agents were able to track the balloon in flight and met the occupants after they safely touched down in a residential yard. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Special air traffic procedures for NBAA base. The FAA has announced special air traffic procedures for airports in the Las Vegas, Nevada area October 18th through 25th to ensure safety and minimize delays in the high traffic period associated with NBAA base. The procedures will affect operations at Las Vegas International, Henderson Executive, and North Las Vegas airports. In addition, a special event parking program requirement exists for all operations into those airports, which must be secured through your FBO prior to your operation. Arrival and departure procedures will be in place between October 18th and the 25th. Increased arrivals are expected at HND between October 17th through 22nd, with many scheduled aircraft display exhibitors for the event. IFR arrivals into HND must file one of the following arrivals. From the northwest, Games 2, RNAV. From the northeast, Bogey 2, RNAV. From the south-southeast, Nintendo 1, RNAV. From the south-southwest, Nintendo 1, RNAV. As needed, traffic management procedures may be used to evenly distribute traffic into the Las Vegas area to include scheduled metering delays, ground stops, ground delay programs, structured routing, miles and trail, and altitude capping. Flight plans should be filed at least 12, but not more than 22 hours prior to your proposed time of departure. After these messages, California politics put Starlink in timeout. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com Welcome back. California politics put Starlink in timeout. Elon Musk's request to bump up Starlink launches was recently rejected by a California commission. Inexplicably, the group made it clear that the CEO's attitude was a strong motivator in this decision. 
The submitted proposal would have increased California's Falcon 9 launch count by 14, bringing the total from 36 to 50. The commission shot it down in a 6-4 vote on October 10th. Commissioner Gretchen Newsom said, quote, Right now, Elon Musk is hopping about the country, spewing and tweeting political falsehoods and attacking FEMA while claiming his desire to help the hurricane victims with free Starlink access to the internet, end quote, despite Mr. Musk's constitutionally protected rights to free speech. Newsom also referenced a suspect report that accused SpaceX of failing to report nearly 600 workplace injuries. Even commissioners who voted in favor of the request, including Justin Cummings, were hesitant. Commissioner Cummings stated, quote, The person who controls these companies has enough power to not work in the best interest when they feel like it, of our allies, end quote. He spoke on the claim that Musk refused to activate Starlink after the Ukrainian military requested assistance in an attack on Russian forces, reportedly in order to avoid the program's overt militarization and violations of U.S. law. If worse comes to worse, the U.S. military could override the group's vote. Musk has promised legal action. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.